Hi, welcome to a very challenging case. She is a 90-year-old lady who has this brown cataract, almost it's grade 6. She has pterygium, sudd exfoliation and most importantly, she is having this head nodding. Well, it's a little bit of a challenge to plan this surgery and implement well. So, in such situations, I think we need to get our priorities right here. She is an elderly lady. Her first goal is to ensure that the procedure has to be very safe, fast and the visual rehabilitation also has to be good. We need to minimize complications both intraoperatively and postoperatively. We need to plan and execute a procedure which fits into all these three criteria: Safety, fast and good visual rehabilitation without any complications. Uh, the plan was to do the surgery under mild IV sedation like medizolom and uh, I needed to think about the procedure, whether to do fake emulsification, whether to do a manual sponge and cataract surgery. And looking at the density of the cataract and overall health of the cornea, I decided to avoid fake emulsification and uh, thought of doing a scleral tunnel manual extraction of the nucleus. thought that would be safer for the cornea looking into the density of the nucleus and also the expected laxity of the zonules. The next would be should I try to save the bag and put in a CTR and then put a proper posterior chamber lens implant or should I remove the bag as well that is converted into intracapsular and then maybe consider a, an iris supported lens or a scleral supported lens. Uh, well, if I have decided to save the bag, then would I want to do a rexus, put in a CTR and then place the lens in the sulcus and have an optic capture in the case of a weak zonules. The other option would be to do a can opener type of capsulotomy like how we do in an extra capsule cataract surgery and then maneuver the nucleus out. In this technique, the option of putting a CTR will be out and I'll have to place the lens into the sulcus. So these were all the thoughts which were going in my head as I was planning for this case. So this is what I decided. So my plan is to perform a manual sponge and cataract surgery, perform a rexus, put in a CTR, bring the nucleus out, extract the cortex and then place a multi-piece hydrophobic acrylic lens in the sulcus and then achieve an optic capture. So this would be my preferred method. Let us see how things turn out. The surgery is begun by injecting 2 ml of uh, lidocaine in the inferior nasal quadrant in the subtenant space for providing decent akinesia and analgesia. The conjunctival flap is raised. Posterior groove is created to help me to fixate. And I'm fashioning a 7 mm scleroconial tunnel. The initial external frown scleral incision is made. Then using a crescent blade, the tunneling is begun from the center. The external incision is about 2 mm behind the limbus. The scleroconial tunnel is extended on either side. So we have an inner uh, lip which is slightly wider than the external one. The side ports are created. The anticapsule is stained with trypan blue. The main incision is entered. Care is taken to ensure that the inner lip runs always parallel to the limbus. The other complexity which I am noticing intraoperatively is the visibility is not so great. So staining the capsule is extremely important. I want a, a dense staining which helps me to see things better. As I'm planning to have an IOL trap technique or the optic capture, I want to have an appropriately sized rexus. It has to be at least 5.5 mm in size. A smaller rexus would make it difficult for me to prolapse the nucleus out of the bag and smaller rexus would indeed risk of you know losing the bag itself. So I had to have a rexus which was not too big and not too small. I'm using Dr. Haldipurkar's uh, forceps, puncture the anterior capsule with a sharp tip. The flap is raised, the flap is folded and as I'm tearing the anterior capsule, I can visualize this wrinkling at the, along the edges of the tear, suggesting the poor health of the zonules. There are moments when the entire bag seems to be 
being dragged and we can clearly note that whenever there is difficulty in tearing or we require excessive force it is clearly evident that there is generalized laxity of the zonules in this patient sort of exfoliation and age are the contributing factors getting the rexus right is probably the most important step in the way i have planned my surgery because if i want to use a ctr and if i want to have an iol trap technique then having the optimum rexus is probably the most critical step having achieved a decent sized rexus the next step would be to assess the strength of the bag i'm doing hydrodissection i'm trying to assess how mobile the nucleus is or how lax the bag itself is Very little amount of fluid is used to do hydrodissection and I'm trying to do it at multiple quadrants and the moment I try to nudge the nucleus the entire bag is moving and this is an ominous sign I'm certain that the cortico capsular adhesions are still intact and when I'm trying to mobilize the nucleus out of the bag there's every chance that the bag might also come along with the nucleus So at this stage before managing the nucleus I would want to stabilize the bag in certain way I want to put in a CTR before putting the CTR I want to create some space for so that the ring can be easily navigated under the capsule through the capsular fornices my trick is to aspirate some of the cortex which is there and then inject cohesive OVD Now after aspirating the cortex and injecting a little bit of cohesive OVD it creates some space through which the CTR can be threaded quite easily and in a relatively traumatic way I'm going to use a standard sized CTR that is 11 to 13 mm because the axial length is in the normal range and I don't expect a very big bag uh, now with the bag being stabilized circumferentially with the help of a CTR I am going to use two Sinsky hooks to just maneuver the nucleus out of the bag. So typically this is called as wheeling the nucleus out of the bag. I am going to use a sodium hyaluronate both in front of the nucleus and behind the nucleus just to create some space and also to protect the cone endothelium as the nucleus will be maneuvered out. So I am going to use the FACO sandwich technique wherein the vectis goes underneath the nucleus and the dilator above the nucleus the nucleus is grasped in between them sandwiched literally and then the entire nucleus complex along with the instrument is pulled out some of the epinucleus and the superficial cortex is then expressed out of the eye using viscoelastic and now is the time to aspirate the cortex and this is going to be a tricky situation because we have a bag which is very loose and the cortex also is entrapped and there is significant number of cortex and uh, aspirating it with the ctr inside might be a little bit tricky but it's possible only thing we need to spend a little bit more time and let's see how things turn out as soon as i go in with my bimanual cannula now the eye being closed chamber i can literally see the bag being moving around uh, with the fluid forces So just to show you how a loose the bag would be I'm attempting to remove the cortex and it's taking quite a lot of time So I come out irrigate a little bit again just to detach the cortico capsular adhesions so that uh, aspirating this cortex will be much more easier I switch back to by manual and aspirate some of the cortex and again I realize that when I the pressure is more in fact it's going to be much more difficult so here i'm doing something very interesting i'm going to use a simco cannula through the main wound itself where the pressure is not very high and i can just go in and hold the cortex and try to strip it in a circumferential manner in a controlled way so with lots of trials and error eventually the capsular bag could be cleaned out quite efficiently towards the left of the screen under the pupil there is seems to be some amount of a cortex which is left there but i'd like to deal with it at a later stage so time to implant the lens now so i'm going to implant a multi piece hydrophobic lens into the sulcus and then achieve an optic capture cohesive ovd that is sodium hyaluronate is being placed just above the anterior capsule and behind the iris to create some space the multi piece uh, hydrophobic lens is being implanted using the injector system itself 
the haptic is gently released in the ciliary sulcus and the lens is dialed in. Gentle irrigation ensures that whatever cortex which was there under the iris is flushed out. The OVD both in front and behind the lens is irrigated out. It takes a couple of time to just irrigate it out. Now once the bag is totally clean and devoid of any OVD, time to achieve the optic capture. With the irrigation in my left hand, the optic is gently tapped posteriorly so that it gets entrapped within the rexus. Ovalization of the rexus indicates that we have achieved this goal. So the principle is the circumferential support is given by the CTR and the haptics in the sulcus and the optic pushed back within the bag. There is a distribution of the weight and this might provide better stability than putting everything into the bag. The other obvious option would be to fix the lens to the sclera or the iris by sacrificing the bag. Patient is relatively elderly and I think uh, in my experience uh, in such generalized only led dehiscence, uh, using this system of using a multi-piece hydrophobic lens with optic capture have given decent results and I am backing myself to go ahead with this. The wounds are hydrated, the conjunctival flap is closed using a clue and tracheal antibiotics are placed into the eye. That's it, time to close. These are the first day post-op pictures. There's minimal coronal edema and uh, the vision is 618. And these are the third day post-op pictures. The cornea is better, the patient is happy. To summarize, there are certain cases wherein, you know, preoperative planning is important. And in these cases, prioritizing our goals were important. In this case, I chose safety as my first priority and it served me and my patient pretty well. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.